Okay? When a fellow actually has had an enlarged prostate and there are nodules in the prostate, the prostate is divided into quadrants and therefore will actually be evaluated and potentially biopsied based upon those quadrants. So when the physician finds that there's a nodule in one of these quadrants and it's palpable or enlarged, then what they're actually going to do is go in and biopsy that and they'll biopsy that with the needle and take out the cells and then what they're looking for is the health of the cell and what the cells start to look like. Okay, So we measure this as what we call a Gleason score. Have you ever heard of Gleason scores? Gleason scores, you familiar with that? Gleason scores G-L-E-A-S-E-N. Gleason score is where then the doctor's taken and biopsied this and then the physician is going to look underneath the microscope and determine that the cells look healthy or very, very unhealthy. Okay? The very, very unhealthy cells then would be graded as a 5 and it's graded then just like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Because it's taken from two regions, the comparison of the two regions then gives us the Gleason score as the sum of those two regions. So let's say that on this side, this is graded as a 3, and on this side it's graded as a 4, then our Gleason score would be 3 plus 4, okay, 7, okay? <laughs> Gleason scores that are lower, therefore, are the more treatable, with the 10 being the very worst score that we could get, and the 0 or less, okay, mean the lower score, the 1, the 2, and up to 4 to 6 are, again, the most treatable. 7 is kind of the cutoff line, okay, for Gleason. Although, sometimes, let's say, though, even though this area measures 3, it may be the major area, meaning it may be the larger proportion of where the cancer nodule is in the prostate. Thank you. And this may be the less aggressive side. And so we may have a Gleason score that scores 7, but the 3 may be the major dominant area. Okay? As opposed to if it were 4 and 3, this case may be less treatable. Okay? So just a little bit of trivia. All right. So this is the way that they look at Gleason. Now, internationally, excuse me, nationally, there is also a grading of prostate health. What we're looking for is when a fellow actually has had an enlarged prostate and there are nodules in the prostate, the prostate is divided into quadrants and therefore will actually be evaluated and potentially biopsied based upon those quadrants. So when the physician finds that there's a nodule in one of these quadrants and it's palpable or enlarged, then what they're actually going to do is go in and biopsy that and they'll biopsy that with the needle and take out the cells and then what they're looking for is the health of the cell and what the cells start to look like. Okay, So we measure this as what we call a Gleason score. Have you ever heard of Gleason scores? Gleason scores, you familiar with that? Gleason scores G-L-E-A-S-E-N. Gleason score is where then the doctor's taken and biopsied this and then the physician is going to look underneath the microscope and determine that the cells look healthy or very, very unhealthy. Okay? The very, very unhealthy cells then would be graded as a 5 and it's graded then just like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Because it's taken from two regions, the comparison of the two regions then gives us the Gleason score as the sum of those two regions. So let's say that on this side, this is graded as a 3, and on this side it's graded as a 4, then our Gleason score would be 
three plus four, <laughs> okay, <laughs> seven, okay? <laughs> Gleason scores that are lower, therefore, are the more treatable, with the 10 being the very worst score that we could get, and the zero or less, okay, meaning the lower score, the one, the two, and up to four to six are, again, the most treatable. Seven is kind of the cutoff line, okay, for Gleason. Although, sometimes, let's say though, even though this area measures three, it may be the major area, meaning it may be the larger proportion of where the cancer nodule is in the prostate. Thank you. And this may be the less aggressive side. And so we may have a Gleason score that scores seven, but the three may be the major dominant area, okay? As opposed to if it were four, and three, this case may be less treatable. Okay, so just a little bit of trivia. All right. So this is the way that they look at Gleason. Now, internationally, excuse me, nationally, there is also a grading of prostate health. What we're looking for is. Again, based off of our examination, our ultrasound, our biopsy, and then potentially a body scan to determine what is called a TNM score. Okay? Are you familiar with TNM? T is going to refer to the tumor itself. Okay? N is for the nodes or lymph nodes, and then the M is if there's metastasis or if it's actually escaped, then metastasis. If it's actually escaped the prostate and the local pelvic area, okay? Where does prostate cancer like to metastasize? Usually goes to bone, okay? Bone, lung, and brain, okay? Even though bladder's next door, uh, bladder isn't as commonly affected as it goes more often to bone, lung, and brain, okay? Lung is very infrequently, unless you are doing something that's carcinogenic like smoking or working in a facility where there's going to be an insult to the lungs. Lungs very infrequently are a primary source of cancer. They very commonly are secondary, okay? So, and the same thing with brain tumors. A lot of times when you look at brain tumors, you need to admit uh, differentiate is that the source or did it come from a distant site okay and so we look at METs from prostate cancers going to bone lung and brain how okay. can you tell if it's originated there if it's secondary uh, by the when you look at the tissue here when it metastasizes, it'll carry usually that type of a cell somewhere else oh. and be then a, METs is that same type of a, an appearance okay so when we look at cancers, especially in bone, you look at what's called a soap bubbly lesion. So it actually has this, this, here's your bone, and then all of a sudden you have this appearance that looks like soap bubbles in the bone, okay? Or you look at something that's called a sunrise appearance, and you'll see on the x-ray this type of a look, okay? Versus a punched out lesion, where it's just completely eroded away and you start to differentiate based on the appearance of the x-ray, okay? The other thing that we'll do as, as a request to evaluate how far is this spread is a bone scan. And what you do is introduce a radioactive dye into the body, and the hot areas will pull that up very, very quickly, and then you can see where it's gone in the body, okay? So it's a, a body scan. It's a nuclear medicine scan. And uh, those are more advanced cases, right? Anybody have a question to that point? So when we look at this then, if the nodes are uh, not involved, it'll come back as NO. If there's no metastasis, it'll come back as MO. If it's gone beyond then, it's MX. If it's gone beyond, it's NX. And the tumors are graded as a 1. Uh, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and so forth, okay? So those are what we're looking for, and, and you can research those more. Those are just some information, but TNM is very, very commonly used also 
as an assist for us evaluating the bone and the bone cancers. Okay, and the, or excuse me, the, the prostatic cancers. Now, what can we do to maintain prostate health? What are some good things to do? Four C's. Yeah. Okay. So when we talk about four <laughs> C's, we've talked about adrenal health in the past. Yes. Um, let's just talk a little bit about how to reduce prostatic inflammation. First of all, get checked. Okay. Most of us as men are very reluctant to get checked. All right. There is not a uh, shall I say, there's no blue ribbon for it that you can walk around that says, hey, I got my prostate checked. <laughs> Unlike there is a little pink ribbon that says breast health and breast awareness and every football player wears <laughs> pink tennis shoes or whatever it is. Okay? But you need to get a checkup. Okay? Prostate cancer is real. And it happens, do you know though, breast cancer also happens in males. Okay? And uh, it's funny, though, when the NFL was all wearing pink shoes and all of a sudden at Wasatch that one week all the boys had pink socks as if our boys needed to be more aware of breasts. <laughs> high school. I have no idea why we do that at high school. Okay, there's the checkup. Get the guy checked. Right? True or true? I don't know. Okay, so I, I suggest Blue Ribbon Week for the boys and uh, we haven't done that yet. Anyway, second thing. Do your PSA. And emphasize again, percent free PSA. Okay? Keep a good eye on that. How's, it, how's my health? How do I look? Hey, Doc, you ran my PSA, but you know, I noticed my PAs, PSA's just been kind of staying the same. Could you include on that percent free for me? I'd really like to know what my real percentage is. Remember, again, percentage is less than 8, more likely cancer. The higher the percent, greater than 12, least likely cancer, benign prostatic hypertrophy. What can we do nutritionally to feed the prostate? What do you want to do there? Zinc. Zinc, very good. What about herbally? Everybody's heard about this one, right? Saw palmetto, okay. Very, very common herb used for men's health. Maintaining good testosterone levels. Okay, how do we maintain good testosterone levels? Have them checked. Okay. Um, tribulus. Maca can help to maintain healthy testosterone levels. What is the driver? Bad testosterone. Dihydrate testosterone, DHT, is the bad testosterone. So just like you have good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, you have good cholesterol, or excuse me, good testosterone, and you also have bad testosterone. DHT is the bad testosterone, okay? And that's what testosterone actually breaks down into in the cascade. Good testosterone actually falls into DHT, and when the DHT starts to climb, then we start to create poor cells, or unhealthy cells, okay? So those are just a few things that we can look at quickly. The other things that we can look at is something called chrysin. Chrysin is an extract that actually inhibits aromatase enzyme, which is an enzyme that's released from our fat cells, which causes our testosterone to be converted into estrogen. So our estrogen dominance, as our body goes from testosterone dominance to estrogen dominance, what do we call that? Andropause. Andropause, correct. So that's andropause, not menopause, right? This is kind of silly. <laughs> Andropause. So that's the male version of menopause. I don't know. Female menopause. Male menopause. Andropause. All right? So those are some things that we look at just readily to aid the body. There are several formulas that you can get. Um, I like the one from Premier that Dr. Krasian's come up with called uh, Prost DHT. And then there's also the formula from uh, Dr. Or from Premier Research Labs, and uh, that one is just a prostate complex. Both of those I've had good results. <coughs> Any questions from there?